Hi and welcome to lecture 5. At this point, we are ready to jump into Active Record, but when you look at Active Record, you're going to see that it looks kind of magical. Things seem to just happen. And what I wanted to do is take a little detour into Ruby, into more advanced features of Ruby, to show you that really all Active Record is, is just Ruby. We're going to take a look at some advanced features of Ruby, the metaprogramming part of it, and we'll talk about dynamic dispatch in this lecture. So in static languages, for example Java, the compiler requires you to define all the methods up front. In dynamic languages, for example like Python or Ruby, methods don't have to be predefined, they only need to be found when invoked. And we'll see why that's a very cool feature. Now the disadvantage to this is that in a static language, if you make a typo, the compiler could help you out because it knows that the methods really exist. In a dynamic language, the method doesn't have to exist, so it's much harder for the compiler, for the IDE, to help you out. So why would you ever want to have a language that's that dynamic? So let's take a look at an example. For example, we have a class called store, which has a description and the price of a store products. And we are tasked with building a reporting system for the store to basically generate reports for different items in the store. So what would this look like? We would have a class called store. And for example, it has method get piano description, get piano price, get violin description, get violin price, and many, many methods with the same pattern of get this desk and get this price. So a naive way of writing a reporting system for such a system would be to have a reporting system class that includes the store file in it. And then you would initialize the store with store.new. And then in the reporting system, you would have methods which would basically just delegate to the store methods. So the get piano description in the reporting system method we just call the get piano description in the store class. So you could have reporting system dot new, where you initialize this variable called RS, and then you print out the description, costs this amount of money, maybe we have justified, and that's so you get the following printout. Okay, but that's a lot of methods. The store already has all these methods, and all we're doing is just delegating to a methods of a store, get piano desk, get piano price, and so on. And you have to have all these duplicate methods. So let's see how we could break it down and maybe improve it so that we could generate some code. So, so far we have seen that you could call the methods in Ruby with a dot notation. So for example, object dot method. But you could also call it using a send method. And the first parameter is a method name or a symbol, so either a string or a symbol. And the rest, if there are any other parameters, are going to be a method arguments. And why is it called send? So think of it as sending a message to an object. So let's see an example. We have a class called dog who barks, and he could maybe greet somebody with a greeting. So all the bark method does is just prints out some message. And a greet method takes a greeting parameter and just prints that out. So when we instantiate the dog class, we could just call the bark method on the dog. But we could also say dog.send bark. So, hey dog, uh, why don't you get sent this message of bark, which basically does the same thing as just as using the dot notation of dog.bark. And you could also do the same thing with a symbol instead of a string. And you could imagine that you could also have a variable method name, for example, that gets assigned either a symbol or a string. And then you could use that variable method name to send the message to, which obviously is the same thing as bark. So that works as well. And if you want to send a message to a greet method, which is this method over here, and pass in a parameter, you just pass that in as a second parameter, and if there are more parameters, you could pass those in as well. 
So this approach is called dynamic dispatch. You're dynamically dispatching based on what the string of a symbol is that could be a variable that you get. And basically, it means that you could decide at runtime which methods to call. Right? You don't have to have dog.bark. You could have dog and then decide at runtime. Maybe it's going to bark, maybe it's going to jump, depending on maybe some other condition. And the code doesn't have to find out until runtime which method it needs to call. So, for example, let's say we have a hash of properties. Let's say name is John, age is 15. And then we define a person class, class person, at an accessor name and age. So we have a getter and the setter for a name and age attributes. And then we instantiate a person. And then all we want to do is we want to throw some properties at the person instance. So what you could do is you could say props.each and then say person.send and then the key would be whatever property is, so name or age equals. So you are sending it to the setter method of a person class and the value is the actual value of a hash. So it would be John or 15. And at the end of the day, what you get is you get a person instance that has a name of John and ages of 15. So the benefit is we didn't have to say if props, for example, if a key equals name, call the name method, right? You would have to have a giant if-else uh, uh, statements uh, clause that basically says if method is name, then call this name method. If method is age, call the age method. And if you have many properties that you're trying to set on the person class, that would be a huge if-else clause. And in this case, you just throw the properties up there, dynamically call them using this dynamic dispatch approach, and things just happen. So in summary, you don't need to call a method using the dot notation. You can call methods dynamically using a string or a symbol. And that is what dynamic dispatch is. Next, we'll talk about this idea of dynamic methods in addition to dynamic dispatch.